Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we will see how we can get metadata of QVDs. As you know that metadata is also a type of data, but those data actually describes and gives information about other data. When I'm saying other data means here QVD. Metadata of QVD will give us information like how many fields are there, how many rows are there, when the QVD is getting created. You might have received this requirement that someone will ask you, I have a QVD, I want to see which application has created this QVD. Or say, we have many QVDs. Which QVD has got maximum number of data, number of lines? Which QVD has got maximum number of fields? Or say we have a field, say customer ID. So customer ID field is a part of how many different QVDs. So this type of information we can get by loading QVD metadata. To make our job easy, I have created a sample data where we have country, customer, date and sales information and I have stored this sales table as a test QVD. So I will load this so the QVDs will get stored and if we go here, we can see the QVD, test QVD. Now we don't need this so I will comment them and say my requirement is to get a QVD create time means when this QVD was created. So there is a function in click script QVD create time that's what I can use. So I can directly use QVD create time using the auto number function and create a table or I can create a variable. So let me create a variable here. So I can say v QVD create time equal to QVD create time and here I have to give the path of that QVD. So what I will do here, I will load this QVD and from here I will take the full path and I will say trace and I will trace it. So when I load this, I will get the QVD created date and time. Now this QVD created date and time, I can even load in a table. So I will say QVD metadata and I will say load and this information I can load here as QVD created date time auto generate one and when I load this and at the front end I can create a table and if I will add this QVD created date and time, then I will get date and time. Instead of creating this variable, I can directly load this and still I will get the same information. Now if I will use subfield function, I will use my QVD location and I will say subfield by this slash and minus 1. So it will give me test qvd dot qvd. So I will say qvd name and when I load this at the front end I can add this qvd name and now I have to remove this dot qvd. So what I can do here is I can either use another subfield or I can say replace dot QVD with blank and then after loading I can get the QVD name. Same way I can get number of records. So if I will go here and I will say QVD number of fields and I will pass this QVD location and I will say QVD number of fields. Same way I can get number of records. I will again pass this information of QVD location and I will say QVD number of records. I can also get QVD table name and 
and now I will load this information and at the front end I will add all information one by one so number of fields number of records and table name so the table name is different than QVD name QVD name is actually the QVD name while table name is the name of the table which we have stored inside test underscore QVD so table name is this let me show you table name is this so you can see we have 29 records are there if you count here we have 29 lines and then number of fields four fields are there so country customer date and sales there there are four fields so at this stage i have customer employee order product supplier and test underscore qvd so i have six qvds so say i want to load information of all the qvds I also want to get name of fields which are part of these QVDs. Then there is a way to load metadata of QVD. How? I will show you. So here I will comment them and I will first load one QVD. So I will go to customer QVD. I will select it and now instead of loading the data of that QVD, I will go to the file format and I will load XML. So there are three different tables we have available. So I will remove first two and I will load QVD table header. I will insert this and I will give name as a QVD table header. Now I will load this data and at the front end I will create another tab and I will use the extension quick table viewer. If you haven't gone through my previous video, I have explained how this extension can be used. I will select QVD table viewer and I will load my all data. So now from here you can see that we are getting metadata of this QVD. What we are interested is created document so this is the path of the document and this is the qvw file click view file which has created this qvd so what i will do i will i will rename this and i will say qvd creator app this second field is when the QVD got created. So I will write here QVD created date time. Then we have table name. So the table actual table name from the application was customer. So I will say here table name. And number of records we have 50 records means 50 lines so what i will do number of records i will say total records and rest of the field we actually don't need so i am removing them and i will load this data and at the front end i will create the same table again but now with the different field names. So you can see we are getting metadata of QVD. Now we will load metadata of another QVD. So I will load metadata of test underscore QVD and here I will say XML. I will untick all of them and I will only load table header field header. And once I load this, I will give the name of this table as QVD field header and at the front end I will create a table using the extension and now we can see that our test underscore QVD has got four field names, country, customer, date and sales. Now what is the meaning of number of symbols? What is the meaning of country 3? So if we see here, 
that we have data of only UK, USA and India. That means this number of symbols means we have three different symbols in a memory of this for this click application. Customer is five. So if we go here and if, if we go here and if we see we have A, B, C, D and E, five customers. Same way we have 10 date. So the distinct dates are 10 and same way we have different sales. So number of symbols means distinct data. So number of symbols means number of symbols means distinct data. Field name is actually our QVD field name. Then offset and width we don't need. We don't need all other information. The same way if I will load customer here, then it will give me the information of customer QVD. So I will create that table again and you can see that customer QVD has got three field and country has 20 different values, customer has got 50 different values and customer ID also has got 50 value. So this way we can get information of our QVDs. But say we want information of all QVDs from a folder. Then simply we can use a for loop. How? I will show you here. So first of all, I will do FG script here. And here I will say for each VQVD in file list. And I will use this location. And instead of customer, I will say star.qvd means load all QVDs from there. And now when I use the trace statement here, when I load the data, it will give us six different QVDs. Now what I can do here is, I can load this first. And I will say dollar $QVD here instead of hard coded QVD name. And, then, and now when I load this, we will get information of 6 QVDs. So these 2 QVDs getting created by these two QVDs getting created by ClickSense file while the while top four getting created by QVW. And the table names are as so on. We are also getting the number of records. Now, the same way I will add field header. And instead of hard coded name I can use this variable and now once I load this I will get information of all the QVD field names and number of symbols. Now only concern left is if you go and see the data model viewer these two tables table header and field header both are not connected with each other. So if I want to connect them then the best way is we can use this variable and I will say I don't need this QVD build number and I will say QVD name and the same I will use here as well. And now when I load this and I will add this QVD name at both the places and if we see the data model both of them are connected now and 
we can also use the subfield function and we can do something like this so the subfield function from here and here I will say replace my hard code value by this and same way I will use here and now when I load we will get the QVD name only so when I select order these are the fields in order table so I can create KPIs now so I can say my first KPI is how many number of QVDs are there so I will say QVD name I have to use this thing and you can see we have six QVDs now at the same time I can also create something like this so I will create and in this table I will say QVD name and I will say QVD field name and I will say count of distinct QVD name so it will tell me that which QVD has got how many number of fields I can also count records so I can say total records sum of total records so it will tell me which QVD has got how many number of rows another thing I can do here is I can create another table and I will say field name and I will say QVD name so count of listing QVD name so it will tell me that this country field is actually part of two QVDs which QVD is sales and customer same way employee ID is part of two QVDs one is order and one is employee this way you can get metadata of QVDs in one go by just passing the location of that QVD files so here I can say let v QVD location equal to this so I can simply use this QVD location and now if I will reload this I will still get the same information so you can simply copy paste this script and just change this QVD location and you will get your desired result. Hope you like this video. Thanks and have a great day.